Hello fellow Star Wars fans, my name is Star Raptor and welcome back to the channel here on the Star Raptor YouTube channel. Every week I talk about the latest in Star Wars comics, keeping the ball rolling. We are going all in on the High Republic this week. We have not one, not two, but three comics spread between Dark Horse Publishing and Marvel Publishing. So jumping in with Marvel, we have Kelnaka issue number one. Yes, that is a direct tie-in to the Acolytes character right we get to see a little bit of the backstory of kaunaka and the interesting thing is we get to go back to the beginning of phase three so we get to see kaunaka his influence in what is happening to a certain degree and all revolves around this padawan named yarzion uh, vel and yarzion vel's padawan dies aboard starlight beacon and when this character talks with elzar and you know sorrow and losing the master is a big deal he gets a new master, and that is Kelnaka. And Kelnaka is able to learn about the culture of Yarzion. And the culture is this character puts tattoos on on themselves in order to kind of remember uh, their culture. And then her own master, their own master, um, is able to also put the tattoos on themselves. And so that is kind of where we see the evolution of, of the tattoos on Kelnaka. We get to see that Kelnaka honored uh, this character, Yarzion, by also getting tattoos on. We get to see the long lived life of a Wookiee, right? Seeing Yarzion actually pass away. And Yarzion's last wish was to be joined by Kelnaka. Um, and that is enough for Yarzian to pass into the into the ethers of the Force. Um, so it's really a touching story. Um, Kalnaka is very, he, he does not talk much. He is a man of few words, a Wookiee of few words. Um, but it's really represented well with the artwork of Marika Cressa. Love the artwork in this. By the way, this is written by Kevin Scott as well. Mastermind of the High Republic, one of the architects. So we get a lot of good kind of pulling in that direction so i really enjoyed this one it's very sweet uh passing on what you have learned which is a prime lesson from yoda just seeing what is happening seeing somebody be knighted by kaunaka with yarzion and then seeing yarzion's padawan coming into contact with kaunaka who will now train her so it's like this whole lineage of people being trained by kaunaka so we're going to see more of this character coming up shortly in the next several months we're going to be getting um, another High Republic ongoing from Kevin Scott. And we already know from San Diego Comic-Con that Kaunaka is going to be playing center stage, at least for a little bit in that story. So very much looking forward to that. Now jumping in to a one-shot. This is Crash and Burn number one. Of course, it's written by Daniel Jose Alter with our work by Nick Brokenshire. And this revolves around Crash Wong, who is one of these, you know, this we had the crash and uh, the, the, there's another one shot that I'm forgetting the name of. Forgive me, guys. But Crash and Burn is kind of a sequel to that. So we have phase three of the High Republic. We have Crash Angwa Wong, I think is her name. And she is kind of the leader of this little uh, cell of rebels against the Nile, if you will. And they are basically just going around trying to take care of business on Corellia and they get intertwined with Crick's Camerat. Crick's Camerat is one of those characters where you really don't know where his allegiance lies because he starts off as a Nile, then they rescue him from a, a Republic prison and use him to try to get to Martian Row. And that's where he is now. He's trying to assassinate Mark Yonro, or is he really? So this whole story is kind of a going back and forth between between Crash and between Crick's. And Crick's, remember, he was the betrothed of uh, Z Morala, or at least he wanted to be, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend with her. And then that's when he realizes she's a force user and he hates force users because he grew up in a force, uh, you know, a cult that's against force users essentially over there on Trimance 4, I believe it was. So I digress. Basically, what is happening in the story is you're having the peeling of layers back of the character of Crash, as you would expect from a one-shot based on his character. We're seeing her reacting to, is she really believing in what Crix is going for? And at the last moment with his plan of trying to get to Mark Yon, she doesn't believe him. She basically kicks him out of an airlock. He ends up getting picked up um, by the capital ship of the Gaze Electric of Mark Yon Mark Yon meets him 
and basically leaves him for dead. Basically just says, okay, you're dead to me. As he tries to throw it, as Crix tries to throw a thermal detonator onto this guy, one of his bodyguards ends up taking the blow, which is uh, Vrant Tarnum, I think, I believe. He ends up kind of suffocating. It looks like kind of like putting his weight over top of Crix when he explodes. So it's given that Crix is probably dead, but knowing Star Wars, he probably isn't dead. Maybe he'll come back as like half a cyborg or something. But long story short, um, we have Crash, instead of going on this transport to Mark and Roe, ends up taking that transport, which is full of very, very important life-saving things, over to Iriadu, which, by the way, Crick's camera just moves the... He's the one that actually moved the occlusion zone over. And we know that from the High Republic Adventure comics. So, yes, this is very well ingrained in the High Republic Adventure comics. So I highly recommend you read those, because if you read this on its own, it's probably not going to make much sense. I will be honest with you. But what does make a lot of sense for me is Echoes of Fear number one, written by George Mann, with artwork by Vincenzo Federici and Vincenzo Riccardi. So we have um, this brand new miniseries of four shoes, I believe. It revolves around Emma Deo and Reese Silas, of course, is phase three. They're in the Jedi archives, the Jedi temple, and they're trying to figure out what's going on with these Echo Stones, right? The, these are these stones that are related to the Rod of Ages, I believe it is, which controls the name. So that's what Markeon Row has. So they're trying to do the research, and it leads them to this old story of the Sith, and the Sith name is Darth Ravi. And we go way back in time. We don't know where this is. This is like in the formation of this. This is way back, guys. And he goes all the way back there. We get this really cool kind of colorful depiction of all this flashback, which reminds me kind of of the... Uh, psychedelic stuff right it's very colorful swirly it reminds me of like what jedi might see when they see the nameless which is interesting because the echo stone is related to the nameless in an abstract kind of way but we see that this guy is looking for the echo stone he finds the echo stone is on this like death star looking armored moon that whoever left the echo stone there doesn't want anybody to get to it because it's ultimate power so it's this kind of cautionary tale that amadeo and wreath learn about where this guy, the Sith, brings in all his top people, all his smart people to go and try to crack the puzzle to get into this moon. They get past the, the first layer. People are dying. He's killing people that are not obeying him. People are dying from traps, like it's Indiana Jones trying to get into this thing. He finally gets to this thing. He picks up the Echo Stone. He's not able to actually have the power to harness it, and he burns alive, and then the Echo Stone burns with him. So it's this cautionary tale of, like, greed what that can do to a person of just kind of getting what they want but not in the best of ways possible so wreath and emadeo are learning this and they realize like okay this is not maybe a hundred percent true like there's some truth in legends sometimes but in this case it kind of gives them kind of the idea of like the echo stones have been around for ancient times like this is not anything new so they're trying to figure out what the cause of the echo stones are how are they related to the nameless so I, I feel like this is going to be a cool series because it's just really what it comes down to so far it's just like two dudes hanging out in the library doing some deep research on sith and different things like that it looks like our next issue is going to be about barnabas zim who was from uh, the quest, uh, quest of the Jedi from Phase Two. So he's coming back, and he also was the first person. Um, his issue back then was the first one that touched on the Echo Stone. So there you go. We had three High Republic comics that came out this week. I'm in the middle of reading the Middle Grade. Beware the Nameless. Be on the lookout for that review coming soon to the channel. So I am well steeped in the world of the High Republic. There is even a High Republic reference in Star Wars Outlaws, which I'm currently doing a review for. So, that is good to do for me, Star Wars. Thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you always. End transmission. There you go. Thanks for checking out the video. Please hit that thumbs up symbol. It helps me know that I'm making content that you guys enjoy. And if you enjoyed this video, I also include two videos down below you guys should check out. And please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps support me and it notifies you guys of when I get new videos up on the channel. You can also contact me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Star Raptor.